Hey everyone, it's your man GS002 coming back at you with another video. Today we're doing part 4 of our 148th scale DX Chigokin VF1A Valkyrie. Again, I'm opening with the box because it's a nice opening shot. And just before I get into the review, I just wanted to do a little bit of general housekeeping things. Um, I realized that I had promised you guys part 4 uh, a few days ago, but... Uh, I'm very, very busy. I'm a working professional. I work over 40 hours a week. Um, got a wife and kids, you know, house and other hobbies and stuff like that. So I've been extremely busy. So apologies for the late upload. But, you know, as they say, better late than never. Um, anyway, in my review area, I've got the model set up. Um, so we're going to head over there and check it out. And I'll be right back. Hey, guys. So here's the VF1A. Um, just my personal opinion. I think that the batch right on this mode is absolutely gorgeous. I think that if you're going to buy a 148th scale figure, um, I really think this is where they kind of shine. Um, and if you've seen my other reviews, you know, you know that I've got the VF1J as well. So I will definitely be displaying at least one of these figures in this mode uh, permanently um, going forward. But, uh, but yeah, so you can really, I apologize for the, for the lighting. Uh, let's see if I can turn on, see if that makes it a little bit better. Um, you can see a lot of the no step signs, air intake, keep clear. Uh, just really, really beautiful. Beware of air blast, danger air intake, again, no step, all this stuff. Now, there's a couple of different mounting options um, that I'm going to discuss. So, there's a bar here. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm going to try to point it out to you. Uh, there's like a little plastic piece at the bottom there. And that plugs into a bar that goes into the top of the figure. So what that does is that joins the legs with the upper with the upper torso, and it gives you a little bit of flexibility. So right now the bar is in place, obviously, and as you can tell, you know the figure is very very stable. However, it limits your movement. Um, with regards to posability, you can only really do like update uh, or upright, excuse me, upright stances. Um, however, I have the VF1J here that has that bar kind of disconnected. If you see in the back, that bar is disconnected. And so there's a rotational point right here that allows you to make some more dynamic poses. And so you see the waist is kind of turned. Um, so it's really what you want to do. Uh, I, I think they're both uh, they're both really, really cool. I think I might just keep them like this, both of them like this for a little while. Um, both figures look great together. Uh, they look fantastic. Um, anyway, somebody had asked me about some uh, some size comparisons. Um, oh, and actually, uh, back to the VF1. A for a second. I do have the cavity fillers installed, whereas on the VF1J, I do not have the cavity fillers installed. So that's another minor difference. Um, anyway, someone had asked me about some size comparisons to some Transformer figures, so I'm going to do that real quick, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're back. So let me just say right off the bat that I'm not a big uh, Transformers guy. Uh, but I do uh, have a couple of Transformers figures. I think I may have like three or four or something. Um, but anyway, so this is the Transmetal 2 Megatron. Uh, this is made by a company called Perfect Effect. They're a third-party Transformers company. And this is uh, Make Toys, their take on Starscream. Anyway, you can see how both of these figures stack up to the VF1A. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's that's my review. I think this this figure is a fantastic figure. If you can get the VF1A for a reasonable price, you know, I would say do it. Uh, it is an it is an excellent display piece. If you're a fan of Macross, you know, definitely get it as long as it's not too expensive. Anyway, this is GS002. Hope you enjoyed my review. Catch you next time. Peace.